Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We pick up where we left off in the previous video, returning the Space Shuttle Atlantis back to the surface or sort of... Okay, spoilers, it's not gonna work out quite right, just like the previous shuttle mission. We've got a bit of a problem aerodynamically and so I have not yet resolved that as of this particular video. Again, eventually it gets resolved. This series is mainly about resolving issues with various vehicles, so um, that is the situation here. Uh, the fuel quantity we have is quite tight, as you can see, it is 21 meters per second left, and uh, I've got it on fine controls to make sure it doesn't use too much. The rudder is overheating, but fortunately we uh, go back up a little bit during this time. That's intentional so that it cools off some of the parts that are more vulnerable. I don't know why the rudder would be overheating. It's sort of shielded from the airflow, but uh, Kerbal is Kerbal, whatever. Uh, we overshoot quite dramatically. Again, I've got some more work to do. Every version is different when it comes to the shuttle. It's just like that. And here you can see the OMS engines overheating for some reason. Now, the problem we had previously was during the shuttle's uh, turn down from its high pitch to a nose down attitude. And it was just doing that too early and it did it too early this time as well. It takes some diagnosing because if you can take a look, uh, our controls are neutral. Roll, yaw, and pitch are zeroed out. It's not like it's needing to adjust anything or it doesn't think it needs to. And yet here we have this uh, roll that occurs. It's not trying to counter it, the KOS script I mean. It's supposed to be trying to hold zero roll, but it doesn't do so very successfully. I had noted that the target pitch is supposed to be at negative 20, but it was below that and it was pointing directly pro prograde like a dart and that's not good either but uh I, so i had a little bit of a problem diagnosing what the issue was that caused it to do this because it could be just the script not responding properly it didn't seem to be using the controls to counteract the situation but no it was just a fundamental aerodynamic problem as far as i could tell so I tried to save the Kerbals. Incidentally, the cabin would survive in that kind of aerodynamic rupture, if you will. Um, and they did have a sort of slide out the hatch to get the crew out safely. I can't imagine too many scenarios where that would be useful, except, well, this one is obviously one of those <laughs> that would require them jumping out the hatch. So... I mainly kept this with me jumping from one part to another because of the music cue. Uh, the music happened to be very appropriate in this situation. Uh, it's just a uh, random play off of VLC Media Player. I'm sorry, I didn't. For some reason, I didn't turn on the uh, music credit in the upper left that I normally have. Missed that, though. I think I restore that later in the stream. These, this is all done during the live stream. Just a reminder. And so we have a splashdown, the Kerbal's sinking, and now last time when we had a splashdown and the Kerbal sank, we were able to recover the Kerbal at the bottom, at the ocean floor, because it wasn't too deep. So I was looking for that, so I decided to time warp and wait it out. Uh, here my patience got the better of me. I probably shouldn't have, but then if you go into the menu and try to go back to Space Center, it wants to revert, so I couldn't allow that. You know, we we have done the thing. Uh, we must preserve the fact that we have done the thing. So somebody told me to uh, click that to figure out how far from the bottom we are uh, during the live stream. And it turns out we were really far from the bottom. So as an emergency measure, I decided we really couldn't wait that long. We already went down two kilometers. So I decided to hack gravity to nullify the velocity so that when we try to go back to Space Center, it'll allow me to. So yeah, I tried briefly to try and have her swim up in hack grab, but that didn't work out. So back to Space Center and we recover the Kerbals like this. And the tourists who paid for a trip are actually on the station, so they're safe. These are just random Kerbals, randomly generated Kerbals who are part of our space program. All right, well here I Decided to try out my Edwards Air Force Base I think I made a previous video with this and this is my Shinkansen space plane Which isn't really meant to take off from a runway 
and isn't really meant to fly in the atmosphere with much of a fuel load. And so, because it's got all the fuel in the tail. And so, lighting its rocket engines and trying to take off from Edwards Air Force Base is a bad idea. And yeah, its aerodynamics are just bad. It's just a simple center mass center of lift position thing. So, I was inspired to make this Edwards Air Force Base from Katniss Cape Canaveral, but it's implemented differently. It's not the way Katniss Cape Canaveral is implemented. This is a, sort of a lazy hack version of how to do it, and it wouldn't work for something like Cape Canaveral or anything that isn't flat. Basically, this relies on it being flat. So, it's a Kerbal Constructs part, if you will, or mesh. And so, there's an Edwards Air Force Base terrain, and I can just click on that to manifest a version of it. You can see I've got a second copy of it there, and I pull it off, and it's a matter of scaling it and clipping it into the ground. And you can see the fact that the ground is flat is very important in this situation. Uh, Katniss Cape Canaveral spent a lot of time figuring out the mesh uh, to make it more appropriate for Cape Canaveral, which is not flat. Anyway, I tried to adjust the balance here and reduce the amount of fuel that we have. That's really the only way we can do it uh, to make it lift off safely, but here the aerodynamics was still off, and so we got a flip. It's a better flip, but not a good flip, obviously. This is gross misuse of the Shinkansen space plane, obviously, and uh, I did discover that I might want to tune down the the survivability of it, though it was just copied from other planes in the game, so I didn't give it any special features. Here we've got the balance correct finally, and again just by draining more fuel. And off we go. It's not the easiest thing to fly, for sure. I don't know if all the control surfaces are exactly how I'd normally have them. It looks like the ones underneath the engines are a little bit off. They also shouldn't be clipping, obviously. So trying to turn, you can imagine how difficult this might be. And ultimately I ran out of fuel, which on the bright side makes it very aerodynamically friendly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's perfectly balanced in this situation. Not the best stall speed though. It doesn't have a whole lot of wing. Actually the rear surface is just meant to wrap around the fuel tanks. It's not got much of a wing per se. It's just a body wrapped around a cabin and fuel tanks. It can't actually, and it does have those sort of vertical stabilizer-ish things, but that's about it. The rest is just really the body. So I tried to do a dead stick landing, but I, I wouldn't say I did a very good job of it here. I didn't fully know what the stall speed of it was. So that was a hindrance, and I'm trying to bleed off speed here by doing little S-turn-ish kind of things. But we also have to descend, and I only get one shot with this, obviously. There's no go-around or anything, so we're coming in pretty fast. Could land on the long salt flat runways, but they're very hard to make out, so it's easier to line up with this one. And I didn't really line up with it at all, to be <laughs> to be honest. But you know, there's some leeway. There's that uh, those dirt portions. It's fine. And uh, it looks like the landing gear survived. And again, I think I made this into a video before, but this was part of this live stream. Uh, this is from June 18th, actually. So we've got quite a lot of live streams to cover in the series. We're not going to be short of videos here. And it comes to a stop eventually. That incline is so that it clips into the terrain properly, otherwise uh, it would be floaty. The, the Edwards Air Force Base terrain would float above the surface, that wouldn't be any good. So here we have an Energia Rockova uh, upper stage. So this is not a side stage Energia, it's 
sort of like a Vulcan without four boosters, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, the Russian Soviet Vulcan, not the ULA Vulcan, of course. So the four boosters are RD 170s, and the core is RD 0120s, just like a normal Energia. And the boosters go off. Really tight there, but it works. So this uh, Energia slash Vulcan is from DeQ, the ECQ, and that mod, even though it's outdated and hasn't been updated for a long time, works except for Buran. Buran does not work right, so that's one thing we can't do. The fairings don't work great either. <laughs> the fairings are somewhat problematic there, but uh, they look good though, so I hesitate to replace them because they do look good. The whole rocket looks good and I can't imagine using anything else for Energia slash Vulcan and I can't make anything better than this, so... Yep, uh, certainly glad it uh, seems to work uh, with some fixing here and there. The realism overall configurations are my own and so when we don't have a real plume here for this engine, this RD57M, that's my fault. I fixed that uh, again. These are the kinds of things that I want to fix during the course of the series, so found another thing that I need to fix. What I couldn't fix was the RCS on that stage. It doesn't puff for some reason. Uh, anyway, so here we have a course to the moon. This is supposed to be a moon station. This is a salient with a spy telescope kind of thing. It's a really big aperture. I can't call it a spy camera. It's a huge, heavy part of this station. So it was meant to do spy thingies. And there's a bridge stage. Very often with the bridge stage, I replace the verniers with duplicates of the engine so that it doesn't take so long to burn because if it's got that toroidal tank, otherwise the burn time is one hour. So this cuts the burn time down. So making the adjustments, that was a nice shot with both the Earth and the Moon in view. Unfortunately, we can't see the Moon when I'm trying to make orbit around it because it's too dark, the sun's on the other side. And here we are in a polarish orbit, a high polarish orbit with this module. Don't get a whole lot of use out of this because I start building Mir with the Energia slash Vulcan um, pretty much immediately after this. So we leave this in orbit and it doesn't get too much, too much work. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.